Welcome back to the Techie Blossom channel. I am Pratik Sharma. In the last video, I explained the core of the block library, the streams. I showed the way to create streams and listen to a stream. Then we saw Qubit in the block library, how Qubit works with and without streams. We took an example of a social media app where likes are a continuous flow of data. In addition, we also saw how we can observe a qubit and handle errors. Towards the end, we also saw block observer, the instance of which we assigned to block.observer. Today, we will see block class itself. Watching the previous video is very important for further videos because it explains many core concepts and today's video totally depends on that because block is very similar to qubit. In fact, the concept of qubit was launched after block. Qubit is a trimmed version of block, which means that some of the functionalities of block are not there in qubit. That's why the format of this video will be a comparative study of both these classes. Saying it again, it's very important to get the basics strong, so do watch this video till the end. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Block relies on events. First things first. Block is a class that also extends block based class just like qubit. For block, events are the inputs, whereas for qubit, functions are the inputs. On receiving events, we process those events and emit states just like qubit. Let's see how a block is created. We are working on the duplicate copy of our previous example and we will see what changes are needed to make a block out of a qubit. First, extend the class with block. A block requires an event as well as in addition to a state. We will create a new event class. Create an abstract class that would act as a parent event class for all the further events. Then define another event class liked. We can also have fields as usual which will be needed to process the event. However, for this use case, we don't need it. In future videos, we will definitely have more complex examples. Pass in the generics for event and state as likes event and int. Again, for a simpler use case and comparison perspective, we have int as our type of state. You can have a custom class for this too. Like qubit, for block as well, we can have parameterized constructor or an empty constructor for the same reasons. You will notice errors in calling emit. Because now we are using block instead of qubit, the emit function cannot be called inside functions. In fact, we won't need public functions at all when we are using block. So where will you handle events? In the constructor's body, use on function for an event type that has the event and emit function as parameters. Basically, you need only these two to process the event and emit state. Then call the liked function with emit function this time. Suppose you have another event set, then you can again use on function with set this time. Remember, in qubit, we saw that if the same state is being emitted more than once, qubit will not emit it. Similarly, block also does this. Now, in the main file, we called liked function for qubits, but for block, we have to add events to the block. So we add liked event and everything remains the same for basic usage or if dealing with streams. Usage of block observer remains the same. When you are using block, you can also use on transition. A transition has a current state, the event and the next state. The transition in block observer is called before on change. Here's the hierarchy of calls for block. First, internal on transition will be called. Then, block observers on transition will be called. Internal on change will be called after that. And then, block observers on change. Remember the tip I gave you in the last video for the order of calling super in on change decides whether the internal or block observers function is called first or not. The same applies to on transition and any other function like this. Since block deals with events, you have another lifecycle method on event which is called when you add any event to a block and it can be overridden in the block itself or block observer. Error handling again remains the same as in qubit. Now quickly let's move to the advantages of qubit and the block that would help you to pick the right one for your use cases. 
the traceability with block is better because looking at a transition you know which event resulted in the state whereas transition is not there for qubits because it is not event driven but you have a change object for qubit and block that gives limited info current and next state one more advantage of the block is again because of its event driven architecture you can apply event transformations for events in a block so whenever you get a flow of same events you can define event transformer and apply it in the transformer for the event handler the debounce time transformer is in the rx dart library so make sure to add rx dart as a dependency in pubspec.yml file the other event transformers are listed here till now you have found advantages of block but there is one advantage of qubit which is it is simple and has less code for qubit we only have states and functions whereas with block we have events states and event handlers and that is all you need to learn about block and qubit from the block package i know you like the video so just give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel in the next video we will learn about the flutter block package that depends on block package and it is made specifically for flutter applications so thanks for watching and see you in the next one